Hey, it's Steve from Mark Academy. We have a fun little project for you today. Uh, if you're like me, I'm from Michigan. Uh, Michigan people know that all seasons really need a fire pit. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be making a, a very simple four panel fire pit for you today using the MIG and plasma cutting processes. Uh, and we are gonna be using the 215 uh, Multimatic and then we're also gonna be using a plasma cutter. Now, we are cutting our panels with a CNC plasma cutter. Uh, it's just a little faster and we already have ours pre-cut. But you could use your 625 or 375 Extreme at home. It's gonna do fine for you. You're just gonna wanna make sure when you put your plates together that you even, even them up with a grinder so to have a little, a little more accuracy. Now, these are the plates that we're gonna have. And as you're gonna see, uh, we're here in Chicago, so we're gonna show off our Chicago pride, a little bit of pride in our city. But for the most part, uh, we're making a smaller fire pit. So the first thing you should do when you are doing any project is come up with a plan. Get your design, get all of your measurements ready. Uh, what we're doing is a 30 inch top and it's tapering down into about a 24 inch uh, midsection, then tapering back out to 30 inches uh, for good stability. But a lot of great things here. We're making ours out of 16 gauge because that's just what was available in our shop for plasma cutting at the time. Well, you could use whatever you like. 16 gauge, eighth inch, if you want to go a little heavier duty, if you don't want to make it so portable, uh, do what you like, okay? So what we're gonna do first is we've already got our four panels cut out. We have to press break them uh, and form them into the angles that we want in order to fabricate them. And after we press break, we're gonna go into grinding and prepping uh, the weld areas so we can get a good, uh, a good weld in there. All right, so let's go to press breaking. So uh, when you're press breaking, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you keep your measurements exactly the same for every single piece, uh, especially when the peaches have to match. So I want to make sure these lengths to the break are exactly six and a half inches because that's how long I need to make my, my little legs for this fire pit. There, and now I'm gonna measure it vertically because uh, I want it roughly to bend about two and a half inches. Right about there. So now we've bent all four sides, what we want to go, what we want to do is we want to move on to prepping. Now, I'm gonna take a 40 grit flap disc uh, on a grinder, a four and a half inch angle grinder, and this is hot roll steel. So I wanna make sure my weld areas are as clean as I can possibly get, so I get the best weld I can get. I want this to last for a long time, so I'm gonna go through the proper steps. Now, here's the deal. If you don't have a press break, a lot of people aren't gonna have a press break out there. Uh, what you can do if you're working on thicker metals, even the 16 gauge, it's gonna be a really hard to press break 20, or excuse me, to bend 24 inches of this material by yourself. So what you could do on the back side, take a four and a half inch angle grinder with a cutting disc, and you can actually lightly score the area, the, the line that you're trying to bend until it bends easier. Put your piece together and then tack it back together so it's a little bit more reinforced. But it'll, it'll allow you to bend that material much easier. But for right now, what we want to do is we want to prep all our areas. So I'm going to lock each panel down to my table and I'm going to use a four and a half inch angle grinder. Make sure you're wearing your safety glasses and hearing protection. And we're just going to take care of this real quick. Now that we've uh, prepped all our weld areas, we are pretty much ready to tack this thing together. Uh, and what we want to do first is we're going to start corner to corner and we want to start low and the center of each and then the, the point where it connects on the bend. Those are the two areas that we're going to be concentrating on. We're going to get that all tacked up and then we're going to move to the top. That way, if we overly bent one or if we have a little bit of an underbend, if one flexed and contorted or distorted while we were bending it, uh, we can actually pull it and push it back into shape and then meet the edges together. Uh, this is thin metal welding, so you want the tightest joints you can get, and we're going to try to be as tight as we can get. All right, so let's get going. Now 
Now that we have a few tacks on the first corner of our fire pit, what we'll do is we'll repeat that process on the next three corners. We'll try to square it up as much as possible. We may have to hammer it into place a little bit, uh, but then we'll move on to the top, re-square it, and then we'll weld it up. So as you can see, we moved all the way around the piece and tacked all four corners together, starting with the lower section and then finishing with the top section. Uh, as I moved up through, I moved about uh, every half. I went every half. So started low, then went middle, then went high, and then did the went back and forth to the centers, spreading out the heat so you don't have as much conductivity, much heat going into those areas so you don't burn through. Now. Uh, another thing, another reason I do that is so I can get the, the best uh, joint I can, the tightest joint I can. Sometimes you may have to take a hammer or a pair of pliers or something uh, and really squeeze those, uh, that sheet metal together really tightly so you can get the best joint you can. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make a bedding for the wood to go into before we move on and weld the entire thing together. And I think a perfect bedding for this particular project is gonna be half inch square bar and then uh, we'll reinforce uh, 3 8 expanded metal. So after triple checking the interior dimensions of my fire pit, uh, what I wanted to do was create a frame that would support the logs in my fire pit. And how I did that is I chopped up some half inch uh, hot roll square bar with a chop saw and then I did about a quarter inch chamfer on either end uh, just to make sure I could good penetration when I'm welding the half inch bar together. So that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, I have the simple frame already tacked up. I'm gonna put my cross supports in and I'm just gonna use some simple welding magnets. We have our half inch square bar and expanded metal grate all ready to be welded on the interior of our fire pit. And we wanna tack the entire thing together first and this will help prevent distortion. Now we have the grate welded into the interior of the fire pit. Now what this is going to do is this is going to true up the fire pit. It's not going to be able to warp out of position when we're moving through the other weld areas. So what we want to do now is we're going to now weld our corners up. This entire corner, wants we want a full bead all the way through this, but this is 16 gauge steel, so we can't do the entire thing. There's gonna be too much heat input, you're gonna burn through, and you have to put it in the welding position that's most comfortable uh, position for you. Now, ideally, if we could get this in flat position and we could do a push technique, that would be great. Uh, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're going to have to do a horizontal position, put it on the ground, still do a push technique, and move pretty fast. Make sure that if you are using auto set on your 215 that you're set properly for 16 gauge. Make sure the clamp is on the material. I do that all the time. Sometimes I leave the clamp on the table and I forget to clamp my piece. Everybody does it. You may do it too. But just remember to put your clamp on your piece and set your machine properly. So that's what we're gonna do now. Um, so we're gonna move this to the floor and try to do a little horizontal position, uh, outer open corner joints. So there you have it, your 16 gauge hot roll steel fire pit made with the 625 Miller Extreme and the Multimatic 215. Now all there is to do is find a backyard, grab some buddies in a cold one, and enjoy. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you wanna learn more about welding and fabricating, go to arcacademy.com to learn about our classes. 
Thanks again, and we'll see you in the shop.